You out there guys, this is Dale of Lone Wombat Airsoft and today we're taking a look at the ASG SAS-12 shotgun. Now I've owned the shotgun for the best part of 8 months so that's really given me time to get to know the platform, what its strengths and weaknesses are and most importantly I've given it a chance to break. Now if there's a specific part of the review you want to skip to, say you just want to see the shooting test, you can find timestamps in the description down below so click on those and it's going to go straight to the part of the video that you're most interested in. And with that out of the way we'll dive straight on with the review. Now, the SAS-12 is a bit of a weird one in trying to determine whether it's a direct replica of a real steel firearm or not. Because information is very thin on the ground with this one. Usually in my searches, uh, was directed to the airsoft version as opposed to the real steel one. Now, from what I can tell though, Frankie absolutely did make a SAS-12 design, but uh, it appears to be more of a derivative of their more popular SPAS-12, which was supposed to fire three inch shells and was pump action only, as opposed to the SPAS-12's 12 gauge and uh, pump and both automatic firing modes. Um, ASG has clearly gone for the cheap and cheerful approach with this one. Obviously the price alone says that, but the overall build quality as well. This is a spring, pump action, single shot only shotgun. Now by most airsofters definitions, that would mean that this isn't actually a shotgun at all, that it doesn't fire three rounds at once. Although ASG does sell a three round version of this that fires three in one go, this is not it. So bear that in mind as we go on with the review. Uh, going back to the price, as I said, it was extremely cheap. I picked this up for £40 from Ammo Drop UK. So, yeah, it's that cheap. Um, I know some sites actually charge more for a war fee than what it cost to buy this gun from new. And at the time of recording, it is not currently in stock on their website, but I'll leave a link to it in the description below regardless. So, what else can you expect to turn up with the ASG SAS-12 when the box arrives? Many, many things for once, which is actually a really nice surprise. I do like it when you get some freebies in there. Now, the gun itself is going to come encased in this polystyrene block with a cardboard half cover, so not entirely a box, but you get what you pay for with this sort of product. Uh, going in, obviously, you've got the shotgun itself. You have a unjamming rod, four Tokyo Marie style uh, shotgun shells, which are the magazines, your token packet of rubbishy BBs, the exterior shell holder that goes on the side of the gun, and a free speed loader. So, loads of things included with here and of course the manual itself. Now it is quite clear in terms of the diagrams it gives you, although weirdly even though I tend to rip on the Chinese manuals for this, this comes in both French and English and there seems to be a couple of missteps with the wording in here. For example when um, releasing the mag cover it says for this one, um, press the unloading button of bullet and eject the cover. So if you get the chance ASG I'd suggest revisiting this manual a little bit because some of your English in here is just a little bit off but very minor complaint, the diagrams themselves are clear enough to tell you what's going on and it's a really basic bit of kit anyway so you don't really need to know that much. So yeah, a lot of stuff included in the box which I'm really happy to see and considering how cheap the overall package is, why do all the freebies come with the cheap guns? Why don't the, some of the more expensive ones include this? Like if you've got like a bolt action rifle like my Striker, proper speed loader as opposed to a tube one is just really nice to have. So yeah, definitely a lot of freebies but as I always say, I don't usually recommend using the token packet of rubbishy BBs, get some proper ones, because the quality in these seems to be very differing. So uh, bear that in mind, but yeah, plenty of stuff in the box itself. So first impressions of the SAS-12 when you pick it up then. Oh boy is it plasticky. Now I don't think there's a single metal part on the entire exterior of this. Even though on the box it does say metal barrel, I think they were referring to the inner barrel as this is very definitely plastic, so a little bit cheeky on their part there. So all that plastic may put some people off right from the start, but one good advantage of having so much plastic is it's extremely lightweight. I mean, I've held pistols that felt heavier than this entire thing, so that's really good for in games. It makes it very manoeuvrable, makes you very light on your toes, so you can sprint for longer and it's not going to fatigue your arms. Uh, that said, however, there's a fair bit of wobble on both the pump action itself and the stock, but if you're expecting extremely good build quality for this price, then you're being way, way too optimistic. But getting real for a second, nothing is more fun in airsoft than actually working a pump action. So let's take a closer look at this. So let's go over some of the features of the gun, starting right at the back with the adjustable stock. Now it's a four position one which you can change or remove entirely, but if you do remove it, this tube's still going to be in place. That's fixed, it's this bit that moves and is adjustable. You do it by pressing this button on the left hand side here and you can move it to different positions. 
Um, now even though it does have a rubberized texture on the side which grips into your shoulder very nicely, this is an extremely loose stock. Um, it does have a habit of changing positions on its own quite frequently which is especially annoying for a pump action shotgun because most people when they go to pump it they brace against their shoulder but when you do that, that happens and it just collapses in on itself. So definitely not what you want in an adjustable stock. What I recommend doing instead is instead of priming off your shoulder, prime off the pistol grip. So more like that. That way the stock's going to say where it is, don't put too much weight on it and you shouldn't have any problems. Um, one note about having it in the smallest setting as well is when it's like this close you can't actually get your eye down low enough to line up the eye in sights. So when you're shooting in this position your shot's always going to go slightly higher than you're aiming. So a little thing to bear in mind which is why I run it with it all the way out but with no pressure on it just prime off the pistol grip is what I recommend with that. Now going on to the grip itself it's actually it, quite comfy considering that it's just solid plastic with some cutouts on the side. It is surprisingly chunky and comfy, so no problems with that. The trigger pull itself is actually quite crisp, so very nice and fun to use. However, one little problem that I know is only going to affect the left-handed shooters among us is the safety. Now, it's just behind the trigger here, and you operate it with your thumb and your finger, but if you're using your left finger to pull the trigger, sometimes you can knock it on safe, and it's really easy to change the position of that safety, so a little bit of a gripe with that. Moving forward, we have the exterior shell holder. Now, really nice this is included, actually. Um, the shells hold 30 rounds each. I've got no problems with the magazines of these whatsoever. But the holder itself, uh, whilst it holds them quite well in the side to side, in the vertical, it's a little bit loose. So if you go to raise your gun quickly, some of them might fall out like that. So be careful of that when you're playing in the games. On the opposite side, we have the hop adjuster. Yes, a gun this cheap actually has an adjustable hop. Um, you do it by pushing this little lever back and forth on that side. It's actually a really surprisingly strong hop-up unit on this. I've run it with barely any hop whatsoever and it gets some impressive range. So yeah, I'm actually quite impressed with that. It's a little bit hard to make the fine adjustments with it because it's such a small little lever, but yeah, nice hop-up unit honestly. I'm not too, um, not too put off by it. So moving forward again, you have the actual pump action itself. now. It is really satisfying to work this thing and sometimes I just take this out for a laugh just because I like using the pump action so much. As I said earlier, there's a little bit of side to side wobble with it but I don't really mind that much. You don't really notice that much in the heat of battle either so it's actually really fun to use this gun because of it and the prime weight's pretty good as well. One thing to note as well though, um, even though this is a single barrel, if you keep pumping it like this, you're not going to get more power, you're not going to load more BBs into the chamber, it is one shot at a time. So bear that in mind. So yeah, a couple of little gripes about the safety because I'm a left-handed shooter, the adjustable stock collapses on itself way too easy and there's just a little bit of wobble and creak from the plastic, but overall, for 40 quid, this is actually a really fun little package to use and I've really enjoyed my time with it, so, and I've had no mechanical problems whatsoever, I've had no jams, no issues, it's never failed me, so very impressed with this little thing. So when I was last up at the jail, I managed to get a shooting test done with this gun. The test was taken using 0.2 gram BBs at a distance of 30 meters and I was firing from a stable firing position. One thing to note though is the slight crosswind and the fact that trying to use iron sights to accurately put in pinpoint rounds is never going to end well. So as you can see from that test, not the most accurate gun in the world, which is kind of weird honestly because I've actually felt that this was actually surprisingly accurate during the games themselves. Obviously the test doesn't reflect that, so maybe it's just in my mind or I'm shooting larger targets or whatever, but just a little thing on that. Uh, I also managed to get the gun in for an FPS test. Now, little notes about this, this was done in the, the CQB Leicester site, the department, and usually I like to show the footage of this, but two reasons why I can't in this case. One, it's a dark room with a very bright screen on the chrono, so you can't see what it's saying anyway. And two, Vanilla Ice's Ice Ice Baby is playing in the background, and if I even let the 15 second clip of that roll, YouTube would be all over my case. So you'll have to take my word for it when I say that this gun is shooting 380 FPS, which is well over the 350 mark, so you can't use it for indoor CQB games and you have to observe the 20 meter minimum engagement rule when using this shotgun. And I'm sure the irony of that isn't lost on any of you. So where do you want to be on the airsoft field to get the absolute most out of this gun? Well, in this case, the FPS readings are going to dictate that one for you. 
You can't use it indoors. You, you cannot use a shotgun indoors in this case, which is just bizarre. Um, traditionally, what a shotgun is supposed to do is to get right up close and personal as far as they can so they can make those three shots count. But in this case, even if you did lower the FPS to take it indoors, I still wouldn't really recommend it because even though it's quite light and manoeuvrable, it's still quite a long package. So not really great for going around tight corners or doorways or any of that. And also not good for outdoor use either because there's no tack rail on the top so you can't mount an optic so don't expect to be accurate at any kind of distance really. Um, so not really good in any situation. Um, however, I still had fun with it and it doesn't mean that it's not impossible to make this work. There's only three situations I can think of where you'd actually want to pick this up. One, if you do plan on using it in outdoor games it's best to do the sneaky approach with this. Because if, in case you forgot, you're only firing one round at a time, you are basically going to be outgunned in any stand-up firefight. Um, so you want to keep yourself on a low profile as much as possible and try and get the drop on people. Second case you might want this is for specialist games, such as pistol and shotgun only ones. Because you're filling a sort of unique role with this. Whilst the pistol and shotgun guys will be getting close and up frantic with each other, you can actually keep your distance with this and try and pick them off from range. So, different role for that. And third and finally, if you just want a backyard plinker, if you just want to have a bit of fun with it in your own house, whatever. I mean, it's 40 quid. You're not dropping that much money onto it. So, yeah, it can actually, it's perfectly viable to buy it for that reason. But as I said, it's a very fun little gun to use. Pump action shotguns are just hilarious. And it's especially satisfying when you're actually still beating people in firefights, even though you know you're massively outgunned by them. So a couple of little reasons why you might want to pick this up. So ultimately then, would I recommend buying the ASG SAS-12? Now, if you want something for special occasions like pistol, shotgun only games, or just a backyard plinker, then yes, I have no problems with this gun. I had a huge amount of fun with it. So yeah, no problems recommending it at all. However, are you expecting this to be the ultimate game winner that's gonna completely wreck the other team? Then no, it's not that at all. You have a minimum engagement range with your shotgun, the entire furniture is made of plastic, that stock collapses if you just look at it funny, and in case you forgot, you only find one round at a time. Now that I think of it, it's probably best to describe this as a pump action sniper more than a shotgun because it doesn't even fire the three rounds. And also now that I think about it, it's actually firing a little bit hotter than my striker is at the moment, so even more of an apt reason to call it that. Ultimately then what I'd say, this is a cheap and cheerful package, you get everything you needed included with it, it's stupidly cheap, so even a daft reason does justify the price for it, so if you want something for that special occasion or just a little daft reason, then definitely look into buying this. Now I hope you've enjoyed my review of the ASG SAS-12 shotgun, if you've got any questions you'd like to ask me or feedback you'd like to give, leave it in the comments section down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And until next time, this has been Dale of Lone Wombat Airsoft.